Hi everybody, today is February 2 on a Tuesday and this is Wanda and I have a word for you plus seven different declarations that we need to stand on together as we are in this time of waiting and watching and praying that God's going to have his way and that we see our republic restored and, and things get on the forward track. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been struggling a little bit, you know, with some tiredness, maybe just physical exhaustion, uh, and even some questions at times. And, you know, I need to get my own faith restored. I've been watching some videos, getting into the Word, getting some sleep. And um, as I was, you know, just waiting on the Lord this morning, He dropped a word into my spirit. And it was a very unusual word. That's how I often know that it must be Him, because it's not a word that I use in my vocabulary. And it was the word acquiesce. And I looked it up, and that word acquiesce means to accept, comply, or submit tacitly or passively. And I knew right away what he was saying. Do not acquiesce. Do not just uh, tacitly comply with the enemy's agenda that is going on right now. And, you know, this is a very trying time. There's no question that our faith is being tested. We are in a window of time. I've said it before. Uh, a lot is happening, and yet there's so many unknowns. And you know, there's both ground warfare as well as spiritual warfare. And uh, I did feel a little bit of a, a caution in my spirit this weekend. You know, the, the ground warfare, you know, we've all probably been getting different intel and links and videos and information about what might be happening, you know, with the military and all that. And, you know, there's probably some, some truth to it. Uh, I mean, even just common sense says you can't imagine, I mean, even the president and, and other of these leaders just sitting back and twiddling their thumbs and not doing anything. You know, there's gotta be some kind of plan. We just don't know what it is, when it might happen. But ultimately, I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, listen, God's Trump has got to be the focus. I mean, he, any plan here only yields and submits to his plan. That's where our hope has to be. You know, in, in the past couple of, weeks and months. I mean, let's uh, be honest, if we look too much at the plans that we hear about what's happening on the ground, you know, things don't happen the way we thought. And then what happens is hope deferred sets in and we begin to feel like, oh no, oh no. And so I just felt like the Lord cautioning me just to guard my own heart and to really look at the spiritual aspect and what God, God is saying. You know, this isn't just a time to just sit and wait. And I think that's the other caution is that in some of these uh, plans that you know come along uh, our way, you can kind of get the idea. We just have to kind of wait and you know watch the show. And you know again, there might be some truth to that, but uh, the enemy can get a hold of that as well and just make us think you just don't need to do anything, don't need to say anything, don't need to pray anything. You know, just watch. Well, no, we, we need to get engaged, and that's part of what I want to want to share with you of these seven declarations. No, we, need, we can't acquiesce, we can't comply, we need to contend. We need to contend for this breakthrough uh, because it's not just gonna you know, happen on its own. Heaven invites us to partner along with this. And so this is what I, I, I wanna share, these seven different things, and, and I'm gonna say them as declarations. And I will just say it at the beginning because I've got a lot of scriptures with this. I do have all this in writing in the blog that I just released today, so I'll tell you how you can go there you can get your own copy, even you know, print it out and, and download because it's, it's going to be a great prayer guide too. But the first declaration is God's word can be trusted. Absolutely. God's word. And it's not just his written word. That's where it starts. Remember, any prophetic word is only built on the written word. Who God is, his heart, his character. I mean, this is what we have to count on is what has God said. And I've said it before. You know, even in terms of what God has said through dreams, visions, insights, revelations, not just from prophets, but from believers all across the world, an unmistakable, uh, you know, collection and alignment into what God is doing in this hour in history. That's what always builds my faith. You know, it's one reason why I'm glad that I journal. And, you know, I hope that you do too. If God speaks something to you that really is powerful, especially if someone prays for you, you know, and speaks a word over you or prophesies, write it down. Because if you're like me, I forget it. And that's why I go back and I revisit what God has said, what really touched my heart at one time. And it's like it comes fresh again. 
And that's what I've been doing in recent weeks. I've been going back and reviewing, God, what did you already say? And it's really built my faith. This is why we need to revisit what God has said. This is why we need to get in the written word and get the word of God in us because he has spoken about his plan and purpose for this time in history. You know, something that I, I do, I'm active on Facebook and one of the uh, prophetic voices that I do follow is Johnny Enlow. And he did a Facebook, he's actually done two of them now, where he just invited, you know, people on Facebook, his friends and followers, just to share uh, what the Lord's been speaking to them about this time in history. And I mean, literally thousands of comments people from all, from all over. And, and these aren't platform ministers. These aren't influential leaders. These are just believers, sons and daughters of God who are hearing, who are seeing. Again, they're not trying to predict or prophesy anything, but yet they all are seeing and sensing the same thing. It's this kind of testimony and the revisiting that we need to always keep us encouraged about what God has always said. God's word can be trusted. This gets into the second declaration. His sheep know his voice. You know, the other week, again, I was having a little bit of time of self-doubt and, and I began to think, can I really know his voice? And, and I was like, and Holy Spirit stopped me. And he brought to mind the scripture in John 10, 4, and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And he said, Wanda, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. I want you to know my voice. And I mean, it, it's so simple and yet we so easily forget. It's those whispers of the shepherd, of the one that we should be building a relationship with on a daily basis, that we get to know him so well. Uh, and, and I've said this before, you know, in the Old Testament, it, it speaks about God speaking to prophets through dreams and visions, but he said, but not so with my servant Moses. With him, I speak face to face. And it's like being a friend of God and that he just talks to you and has that inner conversation. We can know his voice. And the enemy, see, ever since creation, that serpent has been whispering and nagging us and saying, did God really say? I mean, that's what the enemy is speaking right now to so many. Did God really say that? Did he really mean that? Because I guarantee you, once we start doubting what God has said, I mean, it, it's all, you know, we're, we're gonna lose our way very quickly because then we don't have any anchor. God's word is the anchor that we can count on and knowing his voice is so strategic. And so this is something we need to pay attention to is that voice that we can hear, the shepherd's voice. We're supposed to, to know that because it keeps us, even in the middle of a storm, I mean, this is the amazing thing. We don't have to know anything. <laughs> we don't have to know any details, but if we know his voice and, and we know his spirit and it bears witness with our spirit, that's the Father's voice. We can have peace in the midst of anything. And, and that's what we wanna tune our hearts to. And so we need to remind ourselves, his sheep know his voice. I know his voice. And that's what we wanna be listening for. The third declaration that we need to, to be saying is that we are a force to be reckoned with. We are better together than alone. Now is not the time to be standing alone. You know, this whole COVID-19 uh, has really done a number on us. And the other week when our own elder team was meeting together for prayer, because uh, we were praying into it, you know, this, this gets in a, in a touchy kind of thing in terms of how we've been walking through it, you know, whether or not there's masks and social distancing. But as we spent some time before, before the Lord, the Holy Spirit reminded me, there is a virus, COVID-19, but there is a spirit, COVID, that's attached to it and it's demonic. And so even though we can recognize the virus, the physical aspect of using wisdom and caution, there is a spirit that's attached to it that's demonic at its roots, and it's seeking to silence us and to separate us. And so that helped clear things up for me in terms of how I walk through it, that I wanna keep those apart, you know, using the godly wisdom in terms of the virus, but that spirit, I tell you, this is what's happened in the body of Christ this last year. We've been separated from one another. See, the enemy knows the power of our voice and the power of our agreement. That's why he has done such a good job in trying to convince us it's for our own good that we don't speak and we don't gather together. Now, is that really God? And again, I don't mean to step on any toes in terms of you know, how you've been walking through this, but I wanna look at the spiritual aspect and we have to acknowledge 
uh, the enemy behind this. You know, Ecclesiastes 4.12, And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him, but a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Saints, we've got to come together again. We've got to meet together. We've got to be joined together. There's power in our agreement. I've taught on this before, that it's not our prayers that are powerful. It's our faith and our agreement. That's what brings those prayers effective and powerful. It's the agreement. That's what heaven looks at. That's why the enemy has power and control. It's because they're in agreement. We can break that, though, because we've been given legitimate authority. They have none. And that's why it's so important that we are joined together. You need to be joined in a local body. You know, I hear from so many, uh, you know, believers, and obviously COVID has done some of it, but even those in the older community are by themselves. And I don't know how many requests I get, you know, we don't have a church. We don't know where to go. We don't have anybody to connect with. That's a real matter of prayer because everyone needs to be connected. And you know, sometimes it might not be the perfect, you're never gonna find the perfect church or the perfect leader. But I believe even if you can find one or two people that you really share that bond of fellowship with, it can make all the difference. And you know, there are ways to, to take part. I mean, even uh, our, our church, you know, we have live stream services. A lot of churches do that. Obviously it's second best, but it is a way to get connected. And if you're not, connected anywhere, you're welcome to join it, uh, us on our YouTube channel, Crossroads Community Church in Winchester, Virginia. We, we live stream every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, and there's also, you know, Intercessors for America is another place, and, and I'll actually be telling you more about that uh, at the end of this, because there are ways for us to connect. We've got to join together because we are a force to be reckoned with, all right? Number four, the knowledge of His glory will be comprehensive and known across the earth. Remember that, that scripture in Habakkuk 2.14, it says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We have to remember the big picture here of what's really happening. I mean, this, this is epic. You know, you, it's biblical, it is historic. It is so comprehensive what God is doing. It's not just in our nation, it's not just with the church. It is so much bigger and so much broader than that. God is going to the root systems of governments, of systems, of people groups, rooting out. There is a global swamp that he is pulling the plug on. And so we have to allow him to take the time to be thorough. That's really what he's doing. He's wanting to be thorough. And I noticed the other day, actually it was yesterday, I was watching, uh, and it was someone giving a, a report about what was happening on Wall Street with stocks. Now, I'm not into finances at all. But basically, as I was listening and the little bit that I could understand, that even things in that realm of finance, uh, people were waking up to what was really going on behind the scenes of this elite, you know, power hungry people that were controlling the money. And yet God seems to be doing something and turning some things around. And it was just a reality that God is going into all facets of our culture to send the same message. Open your eyes and look. Can you see the things that are happening and how we've been lied to and how we are being controlled and manipulated? This is not the way that God wants it. And so as he's doing that, you know, I'm paying attention because I want to partner and say, yes, Lord, I agree in prayer that you do that, that you help to un uncover these things, expose it fully. Why? So that everyone will have that opportunity to embrace kingdom realities because you can't receive the, the truth until you point out the lie first. You have to recognize, wait a minute, that's not right. And God has that truth. No, I want, I want his, his version. I don't want the counterfeit. I don't want to be controlled, manipulated. No, I want freedom that can only come from the Lord. And so this is what, what he is doing, is that he is he's doing this all comprehensive work so that all can see what he's doing, what the enemy's doing. And I really believe this is going to usher in the great outpouring of the spirit that we've been waiting for. So just know, the knowledge of His glory, it's comprehensive. It's covering the entire earth. Then number five, in terms of God's government, God's government brings authority, order, and peace. Now, I, I, I write in my book, Moving from Sword to Scepter, I have a whole chapter on this, about what God's government looks like. Government is different than politics. You know, we talk about a politic. politics is man's you know, ways of getting involved and in, in, in doing things. But government uh, is God's idea. 
Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of the hosts will, will do this. God has a government that he wants to put in place. It doesn't mean that he's going to dominate everything and that Christians are going to rule the world. No, what it means is that he has a, a system, a governmental system that's the kingdom. It's living by kingdom principles. It's ruling, it's leading in righteousness and truth. And there's other scriptures that say the mark of God's government is peace and order. When God's government is in place, when kingdom government principles are honored and recognized, it brings stability to a nation. It brings stability and order. And it brings peace. Now, it'll bring peace to those who, who uh, partner with it. Now, obviously, there's, there's never going to be in time until, you know, Jesus returns that everybody's going to be saved and, you know, follows, uh, falls in line because there will always be those that will choose otherwise. But yet to those who yield uh, to the Lord and who embrace righteousness and truth, it brings peace. And so this also brings me to a, a very important point that I, I want to say about authority in government because some are saying at this point, and there's, it's drawing a little bit of contention with the current administration, you know, using Romans 13, we're supposed to submit to all, you know, governing authorities. That's what God has told us to do. Well, I've actually done some extensive teaching on this, and I do cover it a little bit in my book. But bottom line is, first of all, Jesus is the only one who has all authority. He told his disciples, all authority has been given to me. All authority comes from heaven. And God has already determined what that looks like. You cannot have authority if you do not walk in truth and righteousness. That's a requirement. And in Romans 13 and also in 1 Peter 2, it talks about what this authority is going to look like. Basically, it says that when a civic ruler, a governor, president, when they are operating according to God's authority, it will be evidenced by bringing terror to the wrongdoer and praising those who do good. That's, that's pretty huge, okay? When God's authority is honored and embraced, whoever is leading, they're gonna bring terror to those who do wrong. They're gonna punish the wrongdoer and they're gonna praise those who do good. That's how you know that that government, that leader is under God's authority. If that leader is not punishing the wrongdoer or praising those who do good, they're not operating under God's authority. All that's left is it's just power and control. And so this is something that we're having to contend with. And for me, I'll just say from my own conscience, I separate out of you know what I cooperate with versus what I comply to. My, my husband came up with that. He said, I, I want to cooperate as best as I can for the sake of the good of everybody, but I'm not going to comply or submit to an ungodly authority that tells me to go against God's word. And so I'll just put that out there. Okay, if you want to know more, you can, you can get my book because there's a whole chapter on it. But my point is that we want legitimate authority and we need to pray for God's legitimate authority because this is an attack on authority. What we are seeing is when there is no authority, when there's no legitimate authority, everything falls apart. That's what we're seeing. Everything is literally falling apart. If you're paying attention to what's happening in other nations on the earth, systems are crumbling. Now that, that's God's doing. But we need godly authority figures. And I, and I do need to correct something, and this came by one of the videos that I watched over the weekend. Because I've written before, and I know we've said before, this is not about a man, it's about what God's doing. And uh, it was actually Mike Thompson in one of his uh, videos. And you know, he reminded me, and I felt like the Lord was reminding me, there's no shame in saying that God uses men and women to lead. <laughs> I mean, the Bible is full of, of biblical heroes, you know, of David, Daniel, Joseph, these men, you know, Esther, these men and women of God that were used as vessels, but they were strategic, significant, because they were anointed and appointed. And so I just say that because this is what we need. We need legitimate authority in order to break through, break the strongholds, break us out of this grip of the enemy. And this is what we need to continue to stand for, contend for, that God's government 
is what rules, that his government and his authority is what is established, not just power and control. All right, number six, for the sake of his name, he will bring vengeance on his enemies. You know, this is a reminder to me when, you know, if we're not careful, we can begin to think everything is so unjust, you know, and we think, God, when are they going to, when are they going to go to jail? You know, when are they going to have to pay their dues? God is going to have his way. You know, Ezekiel 29, but I acted for the sake of my name, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations among whom they lived. You look throughout biblical history, especially in the Old Testament, and though God uses people, you know, and He loves to just release us to do our thing, you know, and, and He loves to equip us to, to be, you know, ambassadors on the earth, there are times where His enemies repeatedly refuse Him, mock Him, profane Him. He gets to the point where He says, enough is enough, I'm stepping in. And I, really, I believe that we are at that point right now in this time in history, that the saints of God have prayed, we have repented, and I've, I've spoken this before specifically about the bloodshed uh, on this land, that there has been repentance. God has been pleased with our worship, with our prayers. And I believe that the, those bowls have already been filled and have already been tipped over. Certainly there's you know repentance that we can always be doing in, in other areas. But I believe we're not at the point where, well, we just need to pray more, we need to do something harder. No, I believe that he is pleased with us and now it's his turn, that he's gonna have his way. And I believe that we're even going to see judgment upon his enemies, those who have refused, repeatedly refused to repent. We're gonna see judgment upon them. I believe like what happened in, in Bible times, and, you know, I've been careful to say anything because I certainly don't want it to sound like I'm, I'm cursing anybody. I, that, that's just, you just don't do that. But, you know, in the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira, apart from any human intervention, they fell dead because of their sin. And I've, I've often felt from the Spirit that this is something that we may start seeing happen. I wouldn't be surprised. Let me just say that. I'm certainly not praying that. I just wouldn't be surprised. Because even in the book of Acts, when that happened to Ananias and Sapphira, it said the fear of the Lord came. And how many of us have been praying for the fear of the Lord to come? I mean, that would certainly get people's attention. But I believe, you know, sin has its own consequence. And when you continue to give in uh, to the enemy, when you continue to rebel against God, there is a curse on your life, and that curse will literally eat away at your mind, soul, spirit, body. And the Lord, you know, dropped in my spirit over a year ago. Don't be surprised if, if, to see some of these, you know, public officials and these who have refused God, that they're going to begin to have mental illness. They're going to begin to lose it. They're going to begin to get physically sick because that's what sin does to us. And so, you know, that's something that should bring the fear of the Lord. But this is why I believe this is a time when God is going to have his way. He's already spoken it. And I believe it's unto releasing a fear of the Lord on the land. So, you know, for me, again, I don't, I don't release curses on people. That's up to God. Only he knows, you know, how he's going to execute judgment. Pray for mercy, certainly. But we continue to pray for the fear of the Lord. But my hope and my confidence is that it's for the sake of his name. It's not just about validating who's right. No, he's validating himself because it's his holiness that he is protecting and he's going to do that. The last declaration here, number seven, is that our faith will overcome the world. You've heard me talk about faith before and how critical this is. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is what's being tested because we are in a time we have no clue what in the world is happening, how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. You know, we, we lean in on, on God's Word. And, you know, He's not, he's not giving us any clue. <laughs> not very many. And we may not understand the details. We may not comprehend what's happening. He just tells us, believe. Would you just believe? Believe in me. Believe in my word. Believe in his heart, his character, his ways. This is, this is where my faith rests, is a lifetime of history with him. 
of knowing his voice and seeing a track record, seeing you know the results of listening and heeding his voice and then seeing the results, it fixes my faith because I know the kind of God he is, not that I know everything about him, but that's where our faith rests. It's in him and what his plans are. Uh, you know, I was reminded of, of Thomas, you know, after the, the resurrection, that, that Thomas was the lone holdout and saying, well, until I see his, you know, the scars in his hands, I'm not, I'm not sure what to think about this. And then Jesus, when he showed him, he said, well, you're blessed because you believe, but blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. That's why I believe that some who, you know, those of us who, who are standing, um, you know, in faith, I believe God does have a, a special reward that we're blessed by the Lord. And, you know, it's not a matter of proving anything on down the road, but that he's pleased. And that's good enough for me, that he's pleased with our faith in him. And that the enemy shouldn't be able to touch. You know, again, you look at all the Bible stories and Job, uh, you know, that was tested. And it was all about, can you still believe God even when everything seems to say you shouldn't? Do you know him well enough that you can trust in him? So, you know, with, with these declarations, again, God's word can be trusted, absolutely. His sheep know his voice. Do you know his voice? We are forced to be reckoned with. It's not a time to be alone. Get with others. The knowledge of his glory will be comprehensive and known across the earth. This is a big work, guys. God's government brings authority, order, and peace. This is what we're contending for, is that his government and of his peace, there will be no end. For the sake of his name, he will bring justice. We can count on it. And it's our faith that will overcome the world. So this is not a time to give up or to give in. This window of time is not going to last forever. But I, I believe that we have to allow it to accomplish, accomplish its work because God knows what he's doing. And, you know, we just can't let ourselves be troubled. We have to be intentional about our faith. And that's why I want to give these, uh, you know, points to you along with some additional scriptures so that we have to, we can build up our faith on a daily basis. Keep our hope alive. This is why I say, you know, put your hope on the offense, okay? Be intentional that I am hopeful because God is, is going to come and he's going to vindicate himself. So some resources that I just want to offer to you. And again, these are going to be in my blog. I've got all the links there. You know, there's a couple videos that I'm, I'm sharing from different prophetic voices. And I usually don't do this in naming other, uh, other people. And the reason I, I don't sometimes is because I'll get comments from, you know, individuals saying, oh, I can't believe you follow that person. You know, they said this or, well, they were wrong in this, so I don't want to follow them anymore. And I'm just going to appeal to you. Um, you know, for me, I don't mind listening. I can listen to someone that I don't agree with completely because none of us are infallible. Um, you know, to suggest that someone's supposed to be 100% right all the time, that, that's just, it's not even humanly possible. Um, and my faith is secure enough, my spiritual foundations are sound enough, I'm not gonna be shaken, uh, you know, just because someone might, might miss it. Uh, so, that, you know, I had to put a little disqualifier there because the, the people that I put down in the videos that I put, I found something that was very encouraging. I felt the spirit of the Lord was on there and, and I pray you'll be encouraged too. I also uh, gave two links for some prayer helps. I get, uh, you know, mail and messages uh, asking, uh, you know, how to get involved in prayer because people are not connected. And so I put a link to the headline prayer with Intercessors for America that you can go online and join in. I mean, it's a, it's a 24 seven news feed that gives, you know, worship songs, it, uh, videos, it gives devotional, it gives prophetic words and, you know, headlines. Uh, it's just really helpful to uh, encourage your faith and your prayers. And there's also another link where they also have a 24 seven national prayer wall that you can actually join. And you can go, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, every day, and pray with others across the nation. They even have a little place that if you do have a Facebook account that you can even message you know, live while people are praying. Uh, so you know there are places that you can plug in and pray. So you can check out the links there. And then lastly, I do have some uh, you know, prayer resources. Like I said, we need each other and we need to be praying together. So something that my husband and I uh, put together a couple years ago was this 21 day devotional guide, Making Room for His Presence. 
And we did it as a community. You can also do it as a small group. But it's three weeks worth of devotions, and it basically is looking at our own hearts, of getting our hearts right with the Lord, getting our relationships right with the Lord, and really praying for our community and our region to prepare the way for God to come and, and you know, that His kingdom would be manifest. So, uh, you know, you could even do it in a small group uh, together. Some people have, have done that. And then the other thing, if you're looking for prayer guides, uh, in my book, Moving from Sword to Scepter, at the end of each chapter, I have a detailed prayer guide that has a lot of scriptures, because intercessors, we love to have a lot of scripture references to go to. And so what I did is I put all 12 of those prayer guides together in one PDF document called Securing Your City with the Scepter. And it's a PDF download for a couple dollars. You can go download it, you can make copies, share it with your prayer group, but they're just helpful prayer guides and they, they cover a gamut of different themes and topics, you know, from government to church leadership to community, um, you know, all kinds of things. So, you know, those are two, two resources there. So if you go to wandaalger.me and click on uh, the top blog article uh, that I post today, do not acquiesce, get your hope on the offense, just click on that, everything will be there along with the links. Lastly, if you are on YouTube, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. Would love for you to get upcoming videos. Uh, and in my blog, wandaalger.me, uh, subscribe to that too, um, because I don't know, you know, with the Facebook, uh, where that might be headed uh, in months and years to come. But would love to stay connected with you. But thanks for taking the time. Please share this uh, with others if it's been an encouragement to you. And just remember, faith is stronger than fear. And God is going to do what he says he's going to do. He's going to finish what he started for the glory of his name. All right. Amen.